Stove here, welcoming you to another episode of Know Your Enemy. On this episode, we'll be talking about a ship that everyone loves to talk about, the Black Cutlass. When people ask what ship should I buy on Reddit or forums, the Black Cutlass is one of the few ships that is always suggested to newer players, or players just simply looking to upgrade their starter ship. Is it as good as everyone thinks it is? Let's take a look and find out. Before we start, I do want to explain how this series works for those of you who have not seen it before. This is a review of how the ship actually performs in the current version of the Persistent Universe and the issues you might run into fighting with it or against it. I do not fly these ships in Arena Commander or sit down and theorycraft this information. I spend a lot of hours flying each of these ships so I can inform you as to the reality of the ship in the current version of the Persistent Universe. So if something ever changes, I will update these guides to reflect that. So let's begin. The Cutlass Black is a medium-sized ship that sits at 35.9 meters in length. Its design is unique but comes with many weak points. In fact, the entire ship is a weak point. Each wing on the front can be broken off very easily, and if you lose a wing, you lose a hard point. These are some of the easiest wings to lose in the game. The next weak points are the engine. These are very easy to shoot off due to being so exposed, and with sub-targeting being recently introduced, these engines are a prime target. Just losing one of these engines will cause your ship from flying like a brick with wings to flying like a bowling ball. The good news is, is that before any of the above happens, you're probably just going to be blown up outright in one or two shots from a player using laser cannons currently. The Cutlass, even though it's medium in size, has only 3,080 HP. To put that into perspective, a Buccaneer has 3,400, and an Avenger Titan has 6,040. So next time you suggest someone upgrade from a ship like the Avenger Titan, please understand that you're asking them to pay more for a vastly weaker ship. In fact, the Cutlass is so easy to destroy in the PU that a lot of times newer players just don't even have time to react before they are waking up in their bed at station. This ship can cause a very frustrating experience in the PU currently if you do not understand what you're getting. Now it's not all bad. The Cutlass is probably the closest ship in Star Citizen that fits the glass cannon term. With four size 3 hard points, you as a solo pilot are able to achieve the damage of that of a saber. With a friend in the turret, you can achieve scythe or glaive levels of burst alpha damage. This is actually insane when you understand what that damage is capable of in the Persistent Universe. It's also a missile machine with eight size 3 missiles and eight size 2 missiles. You can drop a missile swarm even some of the bigger ships in the game would be jealous of. Then of course it does have the 46 SCU cargo hold, which I will go in more depth about for you haulers and traders out there, because there is something you need to know about the mechanics for loading in the PU, it may not be as cut and dry as you think it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and some stats and modules in Hardpoint. Alright, here we are looking at the Drake Cutlass Black in Hardpoint. And now I did mention before that it does have that 46 SCU car cargo capacity and I was going to tell you a little bit about it uh, because it might not be the way you think it works. Um, it's not just as simple as, oh my gosh, uh, I'm going to upgrade this from 8 to 46 and now I can instantly make more money across the universe. It's going to be really fast. It's just a simple upgrade, right? Um, that's actually not the case. So with more cargo capacity, there is a mechanic that limits you, okay? And many people don't understand this, but Jump Town, for instance, okay? There's no armistice zone at Jump Town, all right? For the majority of these trading hubs, uh, like you see over here, right here, all these right here, the majority of these are going to have armistice, okay? Now some of them, like Art Court Mining Area, the armistice zone is literally like 3,000 or 2,000 meters in, in height, so it's there's a lot less of it here. Um, but in other places it does have quite a bit of a, an armistice zone. But it's there, okay? Meaning you can land your ship and you can get out, go to the console, and be fine, all right? With Widow at Jump Town, there is no armistice, all right? Now if you look over here, the profit margin is 72%, compared to something over here at the legal side, 22%, 29%, things like that. So you are getting a higher profit margin with this Widow by a lot, okay? And if you look at the profit here, 10.55, I mean, it's not even close to, to what you're selling some of these others for, right? So when you're thinking about making quick buck fast, people go to Junk Town. Well, you can't just walk into Junk Town and fill up 46 SCU worth of Widow and then hop back in your ship and leave. There is a time limit. Okay, so when you get into Jump Town, uh, you're gonna leave your ship unguarded. You have to walk into that Jump Town place, go through the airlock, okay, which takes time, and you gotta walk up to that console, and then you're gonna click the button, fill up, raise the bar all the way to the max, and you're only gonna be able to fill up 2,000. Okay, that's 20 SCU. All 
all right? So then you're gonna have to wait there a minute to get 20 more SCU, and then you're gonna have to wait there another minute to get the six, okay, to equal up to 46 SCU. That's three minutes in total for a max load of Widow. Now, obviously you'd leave the six behind, and I'd hope you, you'd only stay there for two minutes, but still, two minutes in an unguarded, unshielded ship at Jump Town, that's something I won't do, guys. That's something that I have never done in the PU since I've been playing. I, I don't land my ship solo at Jump Town. Never have, never will, because I know people like me are out there and they'll kill me, all right? And I don't want to be the rabbit in a game. Um, I want to be the wolf, all right? I don't want to put myself in a position to be prey. I always want to be in the position to eat something, not be eaten, all right? So just know that these bigger ships, these bigger cargo capacity ships are going to cause you to get eaten. All right, by a wolf, because you're going to be grazing some grass for too long, unguarded, and then they're going to get hit. Okay, so keep in mind that bigger is not always better in this game. Uh, when you're upgrading from something like a Titan uh, to a Black Cutlass, or from a Black Cutlass to a Freelancer, just know that there's a lot more time associated with filling up these ships. Okay, for that reason, I like some of the smaller ones, like the Titan or the, uh, the 300 series that's coming out, the 325A, for instance, is supposed to have a little bit more cargo capacity now. I'm probably going to drop down uh, my Cutlass to that ship when it comes out, uh, just because I don't like the weakness of the, the Cutlass and how low HP it has, and um, I don't like how lumbersome it is. So I feel like this ship, if I were to do a haul, um, it puts me at more jeopardy uh, than I need to be in, okay? Um, with friends and an escort and everything like that, you can do this, guys. That's great. The Cutlass is probably a good ship. And um, again, it is a jack-of-all-trades ship where uh, there's only really one other or two other ships in the PU that you can really think about that, that fit this build, like the Avenger Titan, because you can put a, uh, a Grey Cat or something in the back of that, and you can fly it around and do 99% of the content in the universe in just a Titan or a Black Cutlass, except for, say, uh, the player bounty hunting where you have to capture an NPC or a player and put it in a prison cell, right? So these ships are going to give you the most bang for its buck, all right? And depending on what you want to do in the verse, it's a very good ship. But I want you guys to understand that it's also one of the weakest ships in the verse, okay? At only 3,880 HP, this ship is one of the weakest. Now, there is a breakdown, all right? And on the, uh, IC, or the SCDB, the database for Star Citizen, they list only one thing or one component as an HP on the Black Cutlass. Usually it gives you a breakdown of uh, the cargo, each wing, the engines, things like that. But unfortunately, it didn't have that information. All that's listed is the wing, which is at 880 HP, okay? Which, if you do some math and uh, take two of those wings away, you're left with 1,300 HP to worry about. And then you have two engines and the actual body of the ship itself, which means the body of the ship has somewhere between 500 and 800 HP, guys. All right, that is way too low. That is lower than an Aurora or a Mustang. The only ships in the PU that I've consistently been able to two-shot or one-shot, guys, are a Mustang, an Aurora, a Buccaneer, and this ship right here, the Black Cutlass, okay? So when you're talking about ships that have lower than 4,000 HP, you are in the realm of being one and two shot. This can cause a lot of frustration if you're a new player. And let's just say somebody said, hey, you definitely need to, to upgrade your Titan to a Black Cutlass. This is a much better ship. And so now what they've done is they've told you to go to a weaker ship. Look at this. So this is the Avenger Titan. They've told you to drop down 3,000 HP. They've told you, now you get more shields with the Cutlass, but again, guys, in the PU, that really doesn't matter because one shot from laser cannons will, will deplete 7,000 HP worth of shields. All right, we know that because it happens. I'll show you this in some videos. So having this lot of shield HP currently, really, it seems good, but in practice, it's really not, um, unless you're talking about large shields, all right, and, and some of the higher HP around 30,000 plus. Uh, 7,000, not gonna do it for you when you only have 3,000 HP, guys. It's gonna, you're gonna take one shot to the shields, one shot to the armor, and you're dead, all right? Uh, maximum of three shots on this ship, guys, always. Um, even with size two weapons, it's kind of scary how fast this ship dies, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm saying this a lot because I want you to understand that if you buy this ship, you're gonna die a lot in the PU if somebody engages you. There's just no way around it. You're gonna have to practice a lot with this ship to get good at it. Even myself, I, I'm, I consider myself a veteran combat pilot. I died so much trying to take this ship into combat, guys, and fight other players, especially veteran pilots. 
Um, some of these guys just scorched me right off the bat because we're in ships where I'm used to being able to take a hit or two and adjust and um, try to maneuver from getting hit again to where I get destroyed. The Cutlass Black uh, gets shot and uh, destroyed so quick that before you can even think to pull a maneuver and before it can even pull a maneuver because it's so slow, um, you end up just blowing up. Okay, so I can't stress this enough. This is a very, very, very weak ship in combat. Okay, for other things in the universe, it might be great, but for combat and people shooting at you, not the best. Okay, so and again, guys, the, the, the Titan, uh, 6,000 HP and uh, 3,000 shields. Now, again, they have the same stats almost, the Avenger Titan and the uh, the Cutlass. Now this is only 220, but it has the same afterburner speed and a little bit less over here on the yaw, but that's not great for the Titan either, guys. This is not like a, a great thing. All right, but when you're talking about this right here, uh, you're, you're almost talking about the same speed. It's, it's 40 under right here, but the thing is, is there's so much more mass with this ship, the acceleration is so slow, okay? Number one, you're not catching a fighter if he wants to run away. Number two, you're not catching a uh, faster cargo ship if he gets the jump on you and you're trying to intercept a, a cargo ship to try to catch him and kill him. Um, chances are they can outrun you if, if you're at a dead stop and you try to start catching them and they've already been moving, okay? So just know that this is a very slow ship. In fact, uh, one of the worst things you can do in the Black Cutlass is actually try to run from another ship. Let's say you, you have a cargo hold with a 2000 Widow in it or something like that, and uh, you're just taking off a jump town and you want to escape a ship. Guys, don't run from it. <laughs> don't run from that ship. That's the worst thing you can do. You're going to die, okay? You're not going to get out of the atmosphere. You're probably not even going to get 9,000 meters away from jump town before you explode, okay? So the best thing you can do for defense on the Black Cutlass is a good offense, okay? And it does give you that. That's the one thing that this ship is gonna allow you to have is a damn good offense, so we're gonna go over that right now. Um, now again, I use fixed weapons. You can drop these down to gimbaled guys um, and go ahead and use uh, gimbaled laser cannons. And again, we are using laser cannons in this meta because we, we know that these are the best and everything else is uh, very lackluster, guys. If you're not using laser cannons, um, you're not competing, okay? And laser cannons are OmniSky, the M4, A's and the Quarreler, okay? Now the Quarreler is not on here. I think the, the Neutron Auto Cannon uh, kind of takes up for the Quarreler over here. I've not tried these though for size two. The Quarreler is size three, okay? But just know for size two, Omni Sky, M4 A's, yes, okay? Anything lower than that, Omni Sky and the M3A, fine. Uh, but if you're gonna go up, Omni Sky, uh, Quarreler, M5A, fine, okay? As long as they're laser cannons, you're doing a lot of damage per hit. And you got four of these, so you're gonna do a lot of alpha okay now we're going to turn this off because this is deceiving okay this is deceiving because this is the turret that your friend has to be in so if you have one of these and we'll go over that in a second if you have a friend we'll go over that but right here if it's solo pilot you have four uh omni sky auto cannons all right that is 551 damage per shot so you're getting 1653 alpha to compare, that's right there with the Saber, guys. You are doing the exact same DPS and Alpha as a Saber. Um, when I shoot my Saber with four Omni Skies, it does 1653. When you shoot your Cutlass with four Omni Skies, it does 1653. Now, the good news is, is that you have 1196 sustained DPS with this 1653 Alpha. The Saber is around 600 or 700, okay? So, and that that's due to power and cooling, okay? so. You have a lot more power and cooling on the Cutlass, so you can just pew, pew, pew. You can fire this this thing so many times. Um, you're not going to have to ever worry about it overheating unless you have a friend with you firing these things right here, which will cause you to overheat. Now, I have never run up against a black Cutlass that's given me trouble in the PU. Now, I've never really run up against a Cutlass that had laser cannons either. But also, one thing that we do, guys, is we change our, our main guns, right? We'll change our main guns, but then we'll give our friend the Panther. Why do we give our friend the panther? We don't do that, that's mean, all right? So if you want your friend to actually do something for you, go ahead and give him some Omni Skies too, guys. It's simple as that, all right? And now, with that on, if you have a friend with you and you're both hitting the same target at the same time, let's check out that burst DPS, 2480. All right, that's higher than a scythe, that's higher than a glaive with uh, just the two uh, main weapons firing on those ships, guys. You're supposed to turn off the two smaller ones on those ships. But um, with just the two big size fives, you're doing more, or 
that's more DPS than the two size fives on the scythe or the glaive, or the, the alpha, that is, okay? So this number right here is huge. If you're hitting, uh, if you have a friend and you're both hitting another ship and you're playing defensive, one or two shots, guys, one or two shots. Now you've, you've almost flipped it and you're putting somebody else at a defensive. Even something like a saber with um, 10,000 HP, okay? You're gonna put it on the defensive very, very quick if you hit it with all these guns, all right? Even if you hit it with just these four right here, guys, uh, you're gonna do a lot of damage to it. And I'll show you that. I have a clip of me fighting a saber in the uh, Black Cutlass, all right? And I do kill him. But um, it, you've gotta understand where your DPS points are in this game. And when you start reaching alpha of 1700 and 2400, you're talking about one, two, three shots um, almost any size ship up to something like a Freelancer. And those sh the Freelancer, Constellation, of course, Starfare, Catapult, those are going to take more. But now you're getting into the DPS alpha realm where a lot of these ships, no matter what you run across, won't really matter to you. Okay, because you just know you're one or two clicks away from winning that fight. So that's how these will affect you. And this is how you should set up your ship, guys. Laser cannons always, I don't care which ones you use. If you can use fixed, go for it, do so. If you can, uh, if you have to use gimbaled, I get it, okay? Gimbaled, some people like it better, but again, it's still good, okay? It's still great. But guys, give your, give your uh, friend a good cannon to shoot, okay? Give him some Omnis, guys. All right, don't be mean. All right, and uh, coming or moving along, you do have eight size three uh, missiles, and you have eight size two missiles. Now you can change these up in a number of different ways. You can bump up the twos to threes and bump up the threes to fours. Now you get one less of each, but to put that in comparison, you know if you take those um, some of these down to size four, now you're going to get a little bit more wiggle room for a lot of damage. Now <laughs> this is actually enough to kill in one explosion a black cutlass. Like if this missile hits a black cutlass. It's, it's going to destroy the Black Cutlass. I've actually tried this. Uh, assailant is enough to kill a Black Cutlass outright. It's actually kind of scary uh, when you think about this. Um, it doesn't take a lot, all right? So uh, when you're thinking about missile swarms in the PU, again, in the PU right now, it's not like Arena Commander. If you practice an Arena Commander, missiles and countermeasures really work well. In the PU, it depends on the server and how long it's been up and the, uh, the lag and latency. Uh, most of the time, though, you're going to get a very laggy missile. You're going to fire that missile, and then you're going to see the triangle of where the missile's supposed to be just lag behind, and it's going to look like it's moving very, very slow. But what it really is is it's just lagging through the universe, okay? Um, now, if you fire a lot of missiles at somebody, it's going to create this turbulence because the missiles are going to catch up with them if they don't leave the, the area of where the, the missiles were shot, and they're going to start bumping the back of your ship and flipping you around and sometimes exploding, and this can cause um, uh, area effect damage and sometimes they explode on target too. They actually do cause a lot of bit of damage, so you can get lucky and blow off a hard point or two, blow off a wing, something like that. But again, um, missiles are, are very finicky offensively, but you can use them defensively to try to swarm someone up and get them to uh, start outmaneuvering the missiles instead of shooting at you, right? So right now I use uh, missiles in that way. If I feel like I'm in jeopardy of, of almost dying or something like that, I will just let loose the missiles, okay? And on this ship, you have a lot of them, so guys, uh, let loose missiles if you have to. It's the best defensive maneuver on this ship that they can give you is just tons of missiles. They don't work well, but again, they are scary. They will flash up the, your uh, uh, enemy's screen with a bunch of countermeasure icons, and uh, that can throw some people off. So it's psych it does have a psychological effect to it. So just know these missiles, while they don't work well, they do have kind of a psychological effect to you or to them and a good use, okay? When you're talking about terms of power, it actually has one of the better uh, power supplies, even though it's the weakest, and I'll explain that. Right now we have 1,289 sustained DPS, shooting those four cannons. Uh, if I switch to the Trommel, I'm only getting 855 because it takes more cooling, this power supply, okay? So uh, power supply is a, is a mix between cooling and power. Uh, the size ones really don't have this issue, guys. The size two, you're really gonna feel it, okay? Uh, so I would just keep the daybreak there and allow yourself to shoot uh, a lot. Um, because again, you're, you're not going to have to worry about uh, shooting these with something like 1289 DPS. It's just going to be able to fire, 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 uh, and they're going to get all the cooling they require, okay? Um, in terms of shields, you don't have to change those. They're the best. But again, guys, um, while they are the best shields, they're going to drop really quick. And uh, remember, even if you get shot through the shields, there is some bleed through damage sometimes. And when you're taking into account this 3880 HP, uh, one thing that 
I, I forgot to really mention when I talk about such low HP is in the components wise is that when you're talking about this amount of HP you don't need to do 3880 damage to destroy this ship all right you don't all right uh, a wing is 880 damage as we went over before if I do 880 damage to destroy the wing the ship doesn't destroy it right however uh, well, like I said, there's only 1300 HP left when you take into the account the two wings, right? Uh, being 880 HP each. So that leaves the cockpit and the hull left, plus the engines. So those two components, the, the cockpit and the actual hull of the ship, once they get destroyed, that's it. You die, okay? It doesn't matter if the wing is still attached or whatever, how many HP the wing has or the engine has. The ship is just going to explode, okay? So when you're talking about that and taking that into account, you're thinking to yourself, well, the cockpit and the, and the cargo or the hull of the ship combined has around 800 HP. They must have 400 each, right? It has to, or something like that. It has to be a, a break somewhere like that, right? If anything, it's only 1,000. So um, when you're thinking about that, understand that there, the bleed through damage is almost enough to kill you. That's why I said earlier that a si one size four missile is enough to kill a black cutlass. It doesn't do 3,880 damage, but if it explodes at the right point, it's going to annihilate the hole or the cockpit, and then you're dead, okay? Because those have such low HP, all right? And that's all you need to destroy on a ship to kill it. So understand that's the way this works. Uh, you really don't have to change these, and the fact that they give 83% efficiency while recharging really doesn't affect the ship, okay? Um, you have the third best uh, quantum drive. I suggest that you don't change that either. You can don't really need to you can get a, a higher of about 10 or 11 more in the cross field but again guys not that big of a deal don't have to worry about that you can if you want to it's an expensive upgrade i don't mess around with it just because you know 73 is good enough all right uh, it's going to get you there in something like four or six minutes where the average ship to hurston is going to be like 10. so from crusader to to hurston it's usually like 10 or 12 minutes for the smaller ships uh with this it's about six uh, i think you can get it down to four with the, the higher one up there the 83 okay so keep that in mind. Um, but again, guys, can't stress enough that this is the true jack of all trades, glass cannon ship. Understand that it has a lot of uh, weak points. Its main armament, all right, or its armor itself is only 3,880, uh, whereas the cockpit and the hull itself is somewhere around 1,000 HP, okay? And that might be split down the middle. Uh, that's very, very weak. And um, then of course, you have the speed of only 220 and then the afterburner speed of 1115 and of course these low yaw pitch and roll limits okay so just know that in the terms of maneuverability acceleration speed and uh, armor you are very very weak one of the weakest ships in the game in fact all right and almost any ship can catch you and uh, run you down or uh, run away from you all right so just know that your strong points in this ship are right here all right and if you're not uh, putting laser cannons on this ship, then you have no strong points, all right? And you're just a, a, a flying uh, matchbox. You're the Ford Pinto of the Star Citizen universe because you're one or two shots away from death and explosions always, okay? So just know that if you don't want to explode, you're going to have to learn to fight a little bit with this and um, uh, use these hard points wisely. Now, uh, being that this ship is really slow to turn and move, uh, using fixed weapons on them might give some of you guys that aren't used to using fixed weapons a little bit of difficulty. Uh, I use fixed weapon, weapons always. Uh, that said, I had a little bit of trouble using the fixed weapons on this ship just because of how slow it is, okay? I'm not used to it. Um, I'm used to being able to uh, maneuver very quickly. This is a lot different, okay? So in terms of that, just understand that you're getting into this, this ship that, um, you know, while it's very weak, the best thing you have going for it are these guns, so you're going to want to use the best setup that you can use for yourself. If you have to drop these down to gimbals, guys, do so, because um, again, this ship does turn and roll and uh, strafe a little bit slower than the others, so if you need that extra wiggle room to, to move your uh, gimbal around to aim, okay, at that person that's a little bit off edge or a little bit off crosshair, then you might need to do that, okay? Um, Again, this is to the person. You're going to have to tailor this to yourself, but I would recommend using the laser cannons and just figuring out if you can use uh, fixed or not. So, 
In this next clip, uh, I'm going to showcase know that. what it's like using stock weapons versus laser cannons. These are two Aurora pilots that I went up against. In the first clip, you're going to see stock weapons. And in the second clip, you're going to see laser cannons. And I want you to note the time to kill for both. All right, it might seem like a short time to kill here, but I'm, I want you to imagine that ship moving also, okay? And the one I'm about to shoot at with laser cannons is going to be moving, moving quite fast, in fact, and uh, you're going to see the time to kill. For all you Black Cuddy pilots out there, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to fit proper weapons on your ship. And I hopefully this showcases that for you. Right, in this video, it's going to showcase some of the weaknesses of the Cutlass. Now, I just killed this guy's Retaliator, and I see him coming back in the Warden, so I was ready for him. I thought we were going to have a really cool fight, a really good fight, and um, boom, I'm dead. Uh, one of the things about the Cutlass is, too, I forgot to mention, is that there are weak points in the shield, meaning there's points on the ship where the shield just don't cover. I have a feeling that's what happened there. He was able to squeak those laser cannons past the shield and just kill me outright. But again, this just goes to show you some of the things that if you fly this ship currently in the PU that you're going to run up against. And if you were a new player, would you actually know what happened there? I probably don't think so. So again, this ship can... Uh, be very frustrating if you don't know what's going on uh, and what happened. I actually had to look at the video again to see that, hey, none of my shields even looked like they went down right away. It just appears that uh, he got lucky and went past the shields and just killed my ship outright with a laser burst. Now I'm going to showcase what it's like to shoot four laser cannons, four Omni Skies, at a Black Cutlass. Now, I get unlucky here and end up hitting two of the side shield panels with two shots. If I hadn't have hit that other shield panel on the right side, it would have been a two-shot kill. Um, understand that even ships with three Omni Skies size three can do this relatively easy. And uh, as far as fighters goes, that's the Gladius, Arrow, Avenger series. So there's a lot of ships that can do this to you guys. One thing to consider on the Cutlass also is the radar screen. It's not as good as some of the other radars out there. Some of the other radars are 3D and you can get a good idea of where everything is around you. Uh, the Cutlass is not going to show that, but what it is going to do is give you audible sounds of what's happening. Uh, right here you're going to hear one of those audible sounds and um, it's going to key you into things. So you're going to, over time, you'll get used to these sounds and what they key you into. The sound you're about to hear is a hostile target appearing. So if you ever hear that sound, you need to be aware that there is an enemy around you that has killed other players. Okay, he's probably going to kill you. Uh, this is a, a warden that I'm sneaking up on on uh, Jump Town now. He doesn't see me coming for some reason. I was scanning, so he should have seen the scans. Um, and he should have been looking out for me, but he wasn't. And I, am, I do get the drop on him because, again, I am running in stealth IR or suppressed IR mode, uh, which is going to lower my signature. So he doesn't see me until the last minute here when I start shooting, uh, which is going to give me the advantage here um, and probably allows me to win the fight, even though I do mess up. Now here, I'm going to go for a quick turn pass. And on a fighter, I can usually do this um, and uh, kind of glide around him and drift a little bit. Now the Cutlass is not going to do that for me, so I end up clipping him a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, it's not as a, a agile as a fighter, so that's where I kind of messed up there. Now I'm going to stop. And uh, that was wrong because he, he gets all these hits in now. And then we go into a, a near miss again. And, uh, but as you can see, even the stock weapons on the Warden um, almost put me uh, down uh, really quickly. So you just got to be careful when you're engaging a ship in the Black Cutlass, no matter what you do. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Know Your Enemy, the Drake Black Cutlass. I hope this helps some of you Cutlass pilots out there understand what's happening to you in the Persistent Universe if you do uh, get engaged in combat, and I hope this uh, helps you outfit your ship better. That way you can get better fights and compete in the PU. That's what this series is all about, allowing people to compete on an even playing field. So please show your friends this, guys. Um, and if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy.